patriarch and Cardinal Joseph Sleepy was a very majestic person. He's, when you met him, then you, you were in awe of his, his persona. Uh, he got, has gone through great, many years of, of great suffering. He was arrested by the Soviets in 1945. He spent 18 years in Soviet uh, prisons. Uh, so, so this was a man marked by suffering and tortures. Uh, but yet, uh, he was not a bitter man. Yes, it's true, he was quite severe with himself and with other people. Uh, he did not mince words. He said it as it was. Uh, but uh, th this was a man who had great vision and a great love for God, for his church, and for his uh, Ukrainian people. Well, he did not spend more than half a year in one Gulag camp because uh, the Soviets were very afraid of any kind of contacts that he had with with prisoners because he he was such a majestic uh, personality that uh, everybody he, you can you can tell this was an extraordinary person. We need role models, and uh, Patriarch Joseph is a great role model for for all ages because first of all this was a person who had principles, lived according to principles. Uh, he did not uh, allow any kinds of promises, false promises, uh, and uh, uh, promises for an easier life. He did not allow these things to turn him away from uh, his church and from his, uh, his assignment, his mission. Because very often we find people going and, uh, and compromising themselves for, uh, for an easier life, for money, for power. Uh, this was a man who did not uh, look at these things. He always said that evil cannot last uh, in eternity. Uh, he always believed the Ukraine would be independent. And as a proof of this, when he was publishing books of the Ukrainian Catholic University, he would always set aside 50 copies in a, in a separate room, which was always locked. And this, he said, was to be transported to Ukraine when it becomes when it becomes free and independent. Now, when we were listening to this, we were smirking and saying, well, yes, perhaps in our lifetime, maybe at the end of our lives, maybe this will be possible. But you see, uh, not even 10 years after his death, uh, th these books were transported to Ukraine. He visited England in the 1930s, and he wrote, even wrote about it. So this country was already known to him before. Uh, he came in 1970 as the, the major archbishop of Lviv, of the Ukrainian Catholic Church, uh, and he visited most of the parishes. He visited London. Uh, there were um, days and, and concerts and, um, and events in honor of him. He celebrated the Divine Liturgy in uh, almost all of our parishes here. Uh, he was uh, led by the, the, the bishop, the local bishop here, Bishop Augustine, uh, plus other bishops of Europe would come to accompany him. So he did visit because he wanted to come to know the Ukrainian diaspora of Great Britain and also to encourage them, encourage them in their life of faith and in their cultural life. Patriarch Joseph Slipe founded the religious society of Saint Sophia. Uh, at first uh, one, one was in Rome, uh, then others in the United States. Uh, he also founded a branch here in Great Britain. Uh, and in Holland Park, he uh, in initiated the, build, the purchase of a building at 79 Holland Park, in which he wanted to house the, uh, a branch of the Ukrainian Catholic University. So uh, this was, this was uh, he, his initiative. He also gave a large sum of money uh, as a... As, um, 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 as a loan, uh, but uh, after, after having uh, bought these, the premises and when the sum was being repaid, he said, no, keep it here and, and have this as, the, uh, as an endowment fund for, for the Ukrainian Patriarchal Society. The role of the Ukrainian Catholic University is to educate young people uh, in uh, the different um, uh, subjects, uh, different uh, fields, uh, and the branches that are uh, all over the world, uh, here in London, uh, there's one in Rome, uh, in other countries, uh, they have as, as their aim 
to foster this, this education and to, uh, although we don't have, for example, classes, um, uh, we don't have regular uh, uh, classes here except for the, for the Ukrainian language, uh, but we have uh, different uh, speeches, conferences, uh, seminars, uh, which are taking taken place on different subjects of Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian uh, religious life. Uh, he he uh, always called Ukrainians to unite, to be to be uh, aware that they are one country, that not uh, to that the, the they belong to one nation. And whether you are the Ukrainians in Ukraine or in Europe or in the Americas or Australia, uh, we are we all belong to the same roots. And so he, even, but even if, if people were living in the diaspora, and of course they were taking on the culture of, of uh, the other uh, nations, he always thought that we should take everything that is good uh, from these uh, nations and apply it also to your own people uh, in order to enrich in, uh, each other.